welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and Co-Founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the impact of the Hart versus Large case on residential surveyors. You can read more about the case itself in one of our previous website blogs. It's essential listening for all APC and SL candidates on the residential or valuation pathways or any candidates with valuation as a technical competency. In a recent interview with Estates Gazette, I commented that the Hart versus Large case set an important precedent for residential surveyors. The initial reaction was perhaps one of anxiety, but it's promoted plenty of positive change since. Surveyors are focusing on risk management through initially advising on the correct survey level and limitations, writing additional reporting clauses relating to PCCs, and ensuring that clients are advised clearly. The emphasis is on ensuring clients and their legal advisors can take the right steps to make an informed property purchase, particularly where a property has been extended or altered, or certain features such as a damp proof course are not visible and inspection. My summary was informed by the very helpful input of residential surveyors from the Surveyor Hub community on Facebook. So thank you to them for their input. I'm now going to tell you about some of the specific feedback from experienced residential surveyors from the hub who had to deal with the impact of the case on their professional work. Other than recommending the client's legal advisor ask for a PCC if one is available for any alterations or extensions and the client having to accept the risk of unforeseen defects existing if there isn't one, it hasn't actually affected my practice at all. Another surveyor said, other than having added a couple of lines of standard text about PCCs, it's not affected me at all either. We've added a standard line about PCCs in more detail in the new documents we suggest in section H. And we've seen an increased use of the word must rather than recommend or should. Another surveyor said that they tell their client they must not proceed with the purchase unless there's a valid PCC in the few cases where I feel it's relevant. I also refer to Hart and Large to explain the reason why I must tell them that they must obtain one, i.e. to protect them and to protect me. I've also been adding more info on PCCs for major works and extensions and advising limitations in greater detail, advising on the correct survey initially and placing greater clauses regarding the scope of inspection to my terms of engagement. I've also created clauses regarding PCCs. My ISBA Level 2 template's been comprehensively revised in the light of the judgment. Our Level 3 template's been amended the same. Clients don't have to follow the advice and are perfectly entitled to proceed against the advice if they wish, though, of course. The final surveyor said we focus much more on risks in general, but with a particular focus on properties that have been altered, we've increased the level of information we set out for the legal advisors as a result. Many surveyors also reported increased PII renewal premiums due to a range of factors, but which we suspect in part reflects the risk created by the Hart versus Large case. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.